Hey guys, Brad Scott here from bradscottvisuals.com and today I have a really interesting topic to talk about and that is passing your part 107 test with the FAA so you can do commercial drone work. Now I've had my part 107 certification for a few months now and I've been able to do some awesome commercial jobs with my drone. I've used both the Inspire 1 Pro and the Phantom 4 Pro to get some amazing footage for different companies that I work with um, in different locations all over the US and then I've also um, used my drone in places like Iceland, Fiji um, to other countries as well. So in today's video I just wanted to go over um, how I was able to get my part 107 uh, the courses and study material that I used to be able to pass my part 107 test in the FAA knowledge testing facility uh, and just kind of go over my whole experience throughout the process of getting certified. Now I was thinking maybe I could make money just through um, posting stock videos and kind of doing it under the table that way but um, after researching everything you can't really even upload a video to YouTube and put AdSense on it to make money that way if you're using a drone. So if you're gonna make money in any way using a drone, whether it be um, with film or photography or maybe in another industry like agriculture or um, 3D mapping, things like that, you need to get this part 107 test. So ever since I started flying drones, I knew that I wanted to do it commercially and so therefore I had to get my part 107 to do it legally and make money commercially with drones. So I sought out to uh, find study material to pass my part 107 test and just find out how to actually even take the test where I needed to go, all that stuff. And I found the FAA website had a study guide that they put out, but straight off the bat it was really confusing. It was uh, basically a PDF that just put everything, all the content into one PDF all mashed together and it was just really confusing right off the bat. Um, and I'm a very visual learner. I like to learn through watching videos step by step, kind of break, broken down into more uh, manageable chunks. And so I sought out to find other courses and videos. Uh, I was looking on YouTube for videos. I found a few videos that were um, kind of explaining a little bit of it, but not in depth. And then I came across a course called Remote Pilot 101 which was a full in-depth course that takes you from zero knowledge of what you need to know to pass your part 107 all the way to being a professional commercial drone pilot, knowing everything you need to uh, not only pass your part 107 test, but also to run a commercial drone operation safely and efficiently. So um, I went ahead and, and purchased the course and went through the whole entire course and got an 87 out of 100 on my part 107 test. I paid $100 for the course. I believe they might be upping the price soon, um, but they are the number one course for training for your part 107. And I highly recommend them. Um, so what I learned was most of the uh, test questions were based around VFR charts, which are basically your um, your FAA aeronautical charts that show which airspace you're in, uh, any sort of um, objects or flight patterns that you need to watch out for, any military operations areas, um, basically anything you need to know as a pilot when you're navigating or setting your flight paths the VFR charts are what you're looking for. Um, so that was kind of like the main um, main bulk of the, the course and the test was based around learning VFR charts and, and knowing exactly what airspace you're in, where you are allowed to fly your drone, where you're not allowed to fly your drone, where you need to get special waivers, things like that. So um, the course really went into detail on every type of airspace and um, if it was an airspace that you needed to get waivers for, they went over how to go about doing that. So it was very helpful. This was something that I had no knowledge uh, about prior to taking the course. So it was really actually fun to learn, um, really interesting and, and really opened my eyes on how to be a better drone pilot. Um, the next kind of big 
uh, section of the test was based around uh, weather and pretty much which weather is, is safe to fly your drone in. Um, stable air conditions versus unstable air conditions. Uh, different types of clouds that affect the way the drone flies, uh, different type of uh, precipitation and fogs that affect your drone. Um, and then uh, a lot of it was team management and basically just best safety practices when you're managing a team, uh, when you're on a on location shoot, and just knowing that the remote pilot in control is basically the, the director of the show, that, they're, they have the final call as far as uh, making sure it's a safe drone flight and a safe operation that you're running. Um, there was a lot of uh, maintenance and sort of making sure you're documenting your maintenance and firmware updates, um, any sort of repairs to the drone. Uh, a lot of the course was going over that. And there was, um, there was a few questions in the test about maintenance and uh, and repairs and sort of safety protocols, making sure your drone is airworthy, uh, but not too much. I would say the bulk um, amount of questions were all about basically just flying your drone safely, knowing what airspace you're in and um, just team management. But uh, Remote Pilot 101 was definitely I wouldn't have been able to pass it without that course because it was videos on every single subject that you're going to need to learn to, to pass the test. And they were really in-depth, really easy to understand. He explained everything really well. And uh, I just highly recommend the course. Um, so it's Remote Pilot 101. And I actually did a blog post um, kind of related to where I live, South Lake Tahoe, and, and what to expect when you're uh, visiting Tahoe and wanting to fly your drone. And I put some links in there uh, referring pe people to uh, Remote Pilot 101 as well because um, I just found that it was a really nice experience. So if you are uh, maybe a hobbyist right now or you're just wanting to get into the drone industry commercially, you want to make money flying drones, I highly recommend you getting your Part 107. Um, you won't be able to make money without getting trouble without it. So. Um, unless you have a exemption 333, then you can go with that. But that was kind of before the part 107 came out. Um, and you will be able to learn how to get special waivers to fly at night, um, fly in, in different areas, and they'll go over all that stuff with you. So, um, yeah, if you have any questions, just leave a comment in the section below. But, um, my first recommendation on if you want to get your part 107 would be to go to the remote pilot 101 website I'll put a link in the description below for you and uh, just start studying with them it's totally worth the hundred dollars uh, for the course because you're gonna be paying hundred and fifty dollars at the FAA knowledge testing facility to take your test so if you fail um, you're gonna be have to spend another hundred and fifty dollars so it's worth making sure you know your stuff. They're always updating the members area, so that's really nice and helpful. You can kind of keep yourself refreshed on anything new, uh, any new rules, anything like that. So, um, yeah, I hope that helped you guys. I'll be going and doing a lot more videos um, as far as uh, camera and drone reviews, um, products, uh, different filters that you need, tutorials on how to get best uh, video and photos with your drone. Um, so stay tuned and remember to subscribe to my channel. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye.